Hey guys, it's Joel Geeb Machine Hunter here, and we are now at the end of 2017, and we are about ready to begin 2018. But this also marks my eighth year on YouTube now. Yeah. Dang. Eight years, man. <laughs> well, where to begin? Well, some of the highlights for me in 2017 was um, I went to IMTA in LA and I won a few awards. And a lot of you who have been following me will have seen some of um, some of my update uh, my updates on Facebook and my last IMTA vlog. I'm going to do it again because I got invited to do it again. And I'm just one week away from it, so here's hoping. <laughs> um, so yeah, there was that. I was also a lot more involved with the Thomas Creator Collective. I got to do mo new, more and new voices. <laughs> um, and I don't know if anybody of you noticed, but I actually wrote some material for it as well um mainly bonus scenes and i helped write one of the episodes um and i also helped design one of the sets for the superstation episodes it was episode one um and how i got involved with that is because i actually live about an hour or so away from sidekick Jason and the funny thing is when I when I made that discovery I'm like hey I I live this I'm not too far from you and he's like hey that's cool want to come down and I'm like sure so he invited me down I went down to where he lives and he showed me his studio and the the buildings in the as simplistic as they look they actually look really good <laughs> and I envy him <laughs> um, also um, I, I helped film this the Crovin's gate scene from uh, the first episode of the Superstation series um, with Thomas James Gordon Henry, Victor, Scarloe, Duke, and there's an eight, a fourth narrow gauge engine. I'm forgetting who it is. But I helped design that set, that, that layout, and I also helped him film a few things. I'm not going to say what, but you'll find out soon enough if you follow Sidekick Jason. And I highly recommend that you do. Really. Um... Let's see, another highlight for me. Well, the other one is TCC related, but um, I don't want to reveal it just yet. But it is, it, it is cool. And I, I, I want to say thank you to everybody that has been following me, and especially to Matt Mashad or Enterprising Engine 93, um, for, because he really was, he's the guy that pretty much got my start in the TCC, and I don't know if I've ever said it outright, but thank you, Matt, really, thank you, because I don't, I don't know, I really don't know, but you, all I did was just ask that one little question of like, will there be any more auditions in the near future? And you said, possibly, it depends on how it takes. And it exploded. And with like, I, I can't remember how long it was, but it was just shortly after I had asked that question, he comes back to me and says, hey, we need somebody to voice D261. It's one line, but would you be willing to do it? You know I am. <laughs> so, 
So that was my first appearance. It was in Secrets of the Stolen Crown. And the first character I voiced was D261, but he had a different voice then, as if some of you really paid attention to the TCC. When I first voiced D261, um... I made him sound a little more like this. Um, I kind of based his voice off of, uh, uh, the third slip coach from Duck and the Slip Coaches, the season 18 episode. And they said they wanted something like that, very, very uppity, very pompous, but also, uh, kind of oily, in a way, something like that. It was just one line. Then, a year later, I returned as him, but I I went from sounding like this to sounding something a little more like this. And for those of you who want to know, I based that voice for D261 off of Eric Bloor. And for some of you who don't know who he is, he was one of those old-time actors. Um, but he was probably more well-known as Mr. Toad from... Disney's version of Wind in the Willows. Uh, let me pull out the video cassette here just a second and enjoy my six-pack cookie monster here. <laughs> this was a shirt I got from uh, for Christmas, I think, a couple years ago. It wasn't my birthday. I know I got it as a present, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, this is it right here. Um, let see if I can get it out of the glare. Yeah, there we are. Eric Bloor voiced this character, and I pretty much based D261's voice off of him. And I know how you've been getting a lot of compliments on doing his scream. <laughs> I gotta tell you, that kind of takes it out on me a little, but what inspired me to do the scream for D261 was one done by Dom DeLuise from... Um, The Secret of Nim. And for some of you who don't know who Dom DeLuise was, he was an actor who was... Um, he did a lot of uh, films with Mel Brooks and a, a lot with Dom Bluth. He was kind of like the John Ratzenberger of Dom Bluth. Like kind of how John Ratzenberger is for Pixar. He is that one actor that always seems to make an appearance in every Pixar movie. Um, Dom Bluth was kind of like that. He was in, um, the first one, which was The Secret of Nim, as Jeremy the Crow, and All Dogs Go to Heaven as Itchy Itchaford, um, An American Tale as Tiger, An American Tale, Five Goes West, also as Tiger, the entire American Tale, uh, movies and series, and, um, A Troll, in Central Park, Stanley, the troll. Um, but I digress. There was... The one thing that I loved about Dom Delaways is that whenever he was voicing these characters, they always get this little kind of like... You know, literally uh, angsty... You know, I, I think that's the right word. It's just like they're really just hi kind of hyperventilating a little when they're, they're trying to get away. They're scared. They're like... <laughs> kind of like that sort of thing. Um, and then he would eventually just belt out this scream, ah! kind of thing. And there was one scream in particular that he did from from the secret of Nim as Jeremy the Crow after uh, Jeremy sneezes into the cat dragon's face. Um, and he's like, excuse me, pardon me. <laughs> and then Jeremy just is in this flurry of feathers, and he just lets out this scream, and it's like, ah! that, that scream is what I base D261's screams off of. Oh. oh, I just remembered another role that Dom DeLuise did, and if, for those of you who watched Dexter's Laboratory, he was Koozie, or Coos, I can't remember his full name, it was Dee Dee's imaginary friend, he was the voice of that character. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, that's what I did for D261. <laughs> and again, I, I thank everybody for being so commenting, uh, commenting on 
on DJ Six Y Z. He's actually a really hilarious character to do. <laughs> now, I kind of hope I see more of him in the future because he's really funny to do. Again, really funny. Um, let's see what other highlights. I'm really trying to think. Oh. Uh, one of my Christmas presents that I just got is the Chaotica Eyeball. For those of you who don't know what the Chaotica Eyeball is, it's like this kind of orb. It's kind of a, a foam, star foam. It's a, I wouldn't exactly say star foam sort of thing, but it's it's kind of foam-like. And it, you, put your, you put it on top of your microphone, and it acts like a mobile recording studio, a professional mobile recording studio. It makes everything sound much crisper, cleaner. It is an isolator, a pop shield, and in all in one. And I have seen my my mentor, Christopher Robin Miller, a voice actor, and he's known as Professor Layton. You've probably heard me talk about him. He got it, and I was asking him about it, and he directed me to the website, and there was an actress... Um, some Disney voice actress who uses one, and she did a side-by-side -side comparison of one with and one without, and there is a big difference. You can be, like, in a big room where there's, like, a lot of space, but when you record in it, it sounds like it's done in a professional setting. It's amazing, and I used one, and I used it. I got it for Christmas, and I managed to find it at a good deal from the website, um... It normally, from everywhere I look, it's either 200 to 250 dollars, and I would not recommend this to you if you are not serious about voice acting. But if you are, I would recommend getting the Chaotica eyeball. Um, I managed to find it for about um, on sale from the website for about 168 dollars. That is actually pretty good. That's really good. And I, I really consider it money well spent. Um, of course, my mom bought it. She got it for me for Christmas. <laughs> um, and I, I used it um, just recently. For those of you who've been following me, you saw me post my Grinch. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch, in the style of Jim Carrey. Um, that was me testing out the eyeball. Um, and another thing you may have noticed is I have somewhat taken that video down because um, I had some things made known to me uh, about these there were certain points in the song where it kind of fell flat and was a little too sharp in some areas so I'm going to redo it I'm just putting that on private and then I'll do a new one with some different takes, and probably use those takes to incorporate in the one I already have made. So, keep an eye out for that. And, yeah. And the other thing I want to point out for this year, especially for Thomas and Friends, holy cow. I, I'm not sure how to do this, because in the past couple of years, I have never seen so much division, you might say, and it kind of makes me sad, because so much controversy has been stirred up, and with the the great race, I was kind of surprised at how many engines they brought back, uh, they brought in um, from different nationalities, and I can't believe some people read into it like it was a reboot, and that... They were being racist, stere stereotyping gen races, races, and all that. And I'm like, these journalists, I'm like, seriously, do you really have nothing better to do? Really? The, where they got their degree for journalism is beyond me. Even for this, for Journey Beyond Sodor... I kind of had, I will admit, I kind of had my doubts about it because of, because of some things that were said, um, and I'm really not too keen on the engines now being able to move about in a almost uh, 
chugging tin sort of fashion, but thank God they're not bouncing off the rails. They're not hopping on their wheels. They're just moving. But, again, it's it still kind of rubs me wrong. I guess it's something that will... that will probably grow with me, give me time, go, warm up to... I uh, warm up to over time. I don't know. But... But here's the thing that's really... That really just makes me kind of disappointed in the fandom. Is both on the Great Race and Journey Beyond Sodor and for the upcoming Big World Big Adventures in Season 22 is all this hate that is being thrown at something that hasn't even been released yet. Come on, people. You could be more mature than that starting to spout out all this hate because I, I understand there is a, a lot of changes coming I don't agree with some of it but I'm not so vocal and the whole Edward thing I am a little surprised that they decided to remove him from the main core the main cast but he in this was revealed in a in a press in a release from uh, Hand Entertainment and Mattel um, on the website um, go there, go to like uh, thomasandfriends.com, the parent side, I believe, and you look at what's coming up. There will be a section about Big World, Big Adventures, and there's a spot that says, even though Edward and Henry are being replaced by Nia and Rebecca, they're not removed from the series entirely. They are still going to be featured. And everybody getting so angst about Edward being removed from Tidmouth Sheds and to being moved to Wellsworth, I kind of find that almost fitting because if you think about it in the books and even in the TV series, he has stated that Wellsworth is his home. Wellsworth is his branch line. The Wellsworth branch line from Wellsworth to Brendam. That's his branch line. That's his home. So him moving there is fitting. He's closer to home. And I, I kind of think how I picture it to be in the near future for this coming season um, is that he'll kind of be that figure that the engines will go to for some advice. Kind of like from the deputation when Percy went to ask Edward for advice. He went to Edward's station at Wellsworth and asked him advice. I kind of have a feeling that's what Edward's role is going to be. For Henry, I'm not entirely sure. And again, I was really, 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 really hoping a lot with some other fans that they were there would be a super rescue adaption or adaptation. I was really hoping for that for Henry for season 21, but they axed it to 18 episodes instead of 26. Come on. There were a few things that were promised to us this season, this past season, such as we were going to explore Rosie a little more. Flying Scotsman was going to return. I would have loved to have seen those. Um, and for those of you wondering about the Flying Scotsman thing, um, if I remember correctly, I think Rufus Jones, um, he's the actor for Scotsman, um, I, he announced it. I think it was on Twitter that Scotsman was going to return for season 21. But that doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Maybe we'll see these, uh, these axed episodes. Maybe in season twenty-two, uh, big world, big adventure sort of thing. I know. But again, back to that. So much negatives, and it's it's the, if there's a a a gif gif. I don't know how that's pronounced. Gif gif g i f. If there is one of somebody constantly doing this, of constant face palming sort of thing, that's how I feel. That's how. That's how I feel about some of the people in this fandom. It's like, come on, people, haven't you learned anything? And he keeps saying that Hit and Mattel are awful. They don't listen to the fans. I would disagree. Because, I mean, look at the past couple of years, ever since Andrew Brenner took up the helm of being the head writer. He's managed to incorporate a lot of things 
into the series set and returning a lot of characters. Duck, Oliver, Toad, Donald, Douglas, Bill, Ben, Toad. Did I already say Toad? I think I did. And, uh, Jack, Alfie, Ma, MX, Monty, uh, Oliver the Excavator, and even giving the breakdown train characters, Jerome and Judy, and even bringing in the coffee pot, uh, uh, Glenn, the coffee pot, and the small, the miniature engines, Mike, Rex, and Bert, and, uh, more recently, Terrence and Bulgy. I was not expecting Bulgy. I was not expecting that. Um, kind of makes me wonder if one of the Axed episodes was going to have him uh, kind of like have a bout with Duck and Oliver, how they would take to him being back on the road. That would have been an interesting episode. <laughs> Um, also, the one of the bigger things was Big Mickey, holy cow. The second I saw that episode, New Crane on the Dock, my inner fan, my inner ch uh, fanboy was just screaming. I was like, oh my god. Because when I first saw the picture that was leaked from, uh, uh, Freeview? Was it Freeview or... Star five star, I can't remember which. It was a UK TV channel website. They revealed the picture of a crane, and I thought, is that Carly? And is Carly Big Mickey? And when it finally saw Carly, I'm like, hmm, I wonder. And when they finally reveal that his name is Big Mickey, that's when I almost lost it. I know that sounds crazy coming from a from an adult, you might say, but that was kind of cool. <laughs> and I really hope that there was an episode for another episode for Big Mickey. Because here's here's what I was hoping for for the final eight episodes: um, another episode about Rosie, Flying Scotsman, uh, Big Mickey, another episode about Terrence, an episode about Bulgy. An episode about Percy, just to round out the whole Steam Team thing. Um, and then Super Rescue. I was hoping for that. And maybe an episode about Bear. If if they had done that. If they had done Super Rescue, I would like to have seen an episode about Bear. That's what I would like to have seen. Or, I think I had it was like Bear and Flying Scotsman were both in Super Rescue and for that one episode. And that there would be like a wild card episode. I think that's what I had. I can't remember. But that's what I would like to have seen. But anyway, again, back to this uh, Big World Big Adventure. I am remaining optimistic about it. Again, there are some things I don't necessarily agree with, but I'm part of the wait and see bandwagon. I, yeah. That's my that's my stance on Thomas and Friends from this past couple of years. Again, I've never seen so much controversy being sparked and causing so much division and hate. It's it's pitiful. Yeah. But anyway, other, on the, the lighter notes, I'm always happy for some new characters. I always like seeing new characters. Yeah. And for Journey Beyond Sword Art, we got to see some really good characters. I really liked it, especially Merlin, because he reminded me very much of Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. I think it's because of that, that childlike faith that he puts into his power of invisibility. <laughs> it's really funny. Let's see. Anyway, back to... And uh, over with that little rant. Um, see other highlights for uh, 2017. Oh, um, I managed to acquire a lot of wooden railway, the old wooden railway toys, 
from uh, somebody I used to buy from. He was closing up shop when I discovered it. I managed to get a hold of him, and he was selling everything that he had. And I asked him how much he'd be willing to sell for that bulk lot of what he had left for Thomas and Friends. And with some help of my dad, we managed to purchase that. I kept some of it for me and my little brother. And I am selling the rest. The majority of it is being sold on eBay. And I've got stuff going on right now. If you look back at some of one of my other videos, like stuff I'm selling on eBay video 4, I think. Video 3 or 4. Um... You'll see pictures of some of the wooden railway stuff that I'm selling. But I will warn you, some of that stuff is gone. And some of it is about to be gone. I would suggest you get on that right away. Because some of the stuff I have in there is rare. Like I have a wooden daisy, wooden Murdoch, Bell. Um, I had a wooden Douglas and an original wooden Mike. St everything is still new in the box. Hasn't been touched, hasn't been played with. Um, the only kind of wear you'll probably see on these boxes is um, kind of a faded look and maybe some frayed corners. That's because these have been sitting on the shelf for a while. Yeah, and I've, I've almost made the money back. I haven't even finished selling everything. I've almost made what me and my dad had paid back and uh, paid into it and i've also got some other items that i'll be putting up as well i managed to acquire a few things before they ran out on mattel's website um, i'm not going to reveal what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna leave that there kind of see what um kind of reactions i might get <laughs> but yeah i managed to get those and i also finally managed to get some of the uh, Sodor Story collection sets. I managed to get three of the four I wanted to get. And that was the Dustin Comes In first set, which, by the way, is actually pretty good. It's a pretty good set. And I, I really, me and my our brother, I gave it to him for Christmas, along with a few other things. And he was not expecting the Dustin Comes In first set. He was like, he was like what is this? He opens it up, and he's like, he just had that look of like, oh, am goodness. <laughs> it was so funny. And then we managed to clear space and build the layout. And I really like the, the one hill with all the little snow, the snow tunnel thing. And when you push dust down, it just unfolds as it goes down. It's, it's funny. It's really funny. I'm kind of like that. I'm weird that way. <laughs> but yeah. And... Again, that is just the tip of the iceberg. I've got a lot of stuff for him. And I've got, let's see, I got the Dustin Comes in first set, uh, James sorts it out, and Sam and the Great Bell. And I am planning, I'm trying to get a hold of, of the Merrick and the Rock Crusher set, the Logan and the Big Blue Engine set, and... Percy and Reg at the Scrapyard. Those are some of the things that are on my list. So to anybody who might know where these are and for a possibly a cheap price, really cheap, almost affordable like price, please tell me because I have been looking on eBay and I've come close on a few things, just some people weren't willing to sell at the prices I was looking for and I'm also look yes I'm I just remembered I'm also looking for hero as well I'm looking for a hero hero the Japanese engine the master of the railway and or something or something else I had in mind I'm forgetting it but yeah that's kind of what I'm looking for right now before they become extinct. Okay? So, again, to anybody who might know, please tell me. I really want to get these. Because I want to try to amass enough of this stuff before this new Thomas Wood becomes big. And I, I again, actually, it's already come out. And I, 
No. That line, Thomas Wood, is an atrocity. It's, as Gordon Henry and James would put it, disgraceful, disgusting, despicable. It's awful. I do not like it. It's cheap out. It's a cheap out, pretty much. They've lowered the quality, and they're still trying to charge you the same for it. And they've even made them smaller. As I managed to see, um, do a side-by-side -side comparison on some of them, and I was like, holy cow. They're, they're, they're actually a little smaller. Um, let's see, like, if I can remember, it's like, I'm trying to think of a good comparison. Like, Hmm. <laughs> Nothing really comes to mind. But again, they're, 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 uh, probably somebody else has covered it on YouTube. And again, it's... Why... It's, that this comes to mind. Why fix something that ain't broke? So that's something that has been going ever since I was like two years old, I believe. That line started coming out when I was about two years old. And I got my first wooden set. It wasn't Thomas. It was one of those uh, store wooden train sets. And I managed to get a few of the destinations, such as... See, the first ones I got were the Stone Tunnel, the Arched Bridge, um, the Workshop... The lifting bridge. Let's see. And the mountain tunnel. Those were some of the things we got. <sighs> and also I had a, a figure eight set as well. It wasn't the Thomas and Friends with figure eight set, it was something else. I think it was Brio. I think it was a Brio figure eight set. Yeah. I think it was. And there was another one, a few other Brio things as well. And the first engine I actually got, the first wooden engine I got, and I still have it, is Percy from the Best of Percy video. That was the first one I had ever gotten. And the next one was Toby from the Trackside Tunes and other Railway Rhythms. Thomas's Trackside Tunes VHS. That had the songs from season five. And other piece of rolling stock I got. First one was the log cars because we got my brother at the time when he used to be a little Thomas head like me, um, he got the the lumber yard set. That was also a coveted piece. I remember that one. He managed to get that and four log cars. And I was like why? Why you no give me? <laughs> yeah. So that was that was that was some of the first things like I remember getting for Thomas. Um, I think I remember also getting the circus train. I think it was also the circus train. I think it was the circus train that we also got. Um, the, the, the three circus cars with the five animal pieces. It used to be five animal pieces. Now they just made it to three. They made the, the pieces thicker. Yeah. Um, those were some of the first ones. And then I, if I remember correctly, I also got... Uh, right after them, I started buying some of the wooden trains because there's like this little sale going on because at the time I started buying them was when Thomas and the Magic Railroad came out. And I managed to get Duck, Diesel 10, Lady, Splatter, Dodge, um, the Troublesome Truck, Mike, Gordon, and then Thomas. So those were my first engines back then. <laughs> Oh, and then I also got Cranky the Crane, 
and the uh, the transfer table, and the, the shed, and the turntable. I remember now. I remember getting the old turntable and the old shed, the 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 single engine shed, the one that was like red and had a black roof that you could move. Um, yeah, I got those. I remember those now. Oh man, I'm just being hit with a wave of nostalgia right now. That is so unintentional. <laughs> but, yeah. Thomas Wooden Railway is not what it used to be now. That was the last piece of merchandise that was sacred, so to speak. But, Let's try to think of something that's else that was also a bit more of a positive to end this video with, because I have already gone over 35 minutes, 36 minutes now. What other positive thing is going? Oh, my Christmas Carol audio project. Yes, because this one I just started writing because I was like, I want to. I was just reading it one day, and then I'm like. I started reading it in a way that was kind of like an audio drama. What inspired me was the uh, Chronicles of Narnia audio dramas by Focus on the Family. Um, I'm still looking for some talent on there. This is the last day of that audition video I put out. I'll probably put out another one. Um, I got a, a good cast rolling so far. I'm not going to reveal who I have yet. Because some of that I want to be a surprise. And the other uh, thing that was also a good thing was the Railways of Crotunia finally was released this year. The first couple of episodes. So, yay! And I got to voice Thomas in the Railways of Crotunia. That is kind of a dream come true right there. <laughs> that was fun and that was fun and it's still fun i'm still waiting on some more episodes i managed to record a lot for that um the majority of the characters i voice are thomas related characters and for some of you who are following uh, dueling express for the crotunian origins thing you'll notice i don't just voice thomas and friends characters i do voice some other characters and the majority of them, I voice, are Thomas and Tug's characters. That. Well, I really can't think of anything else other than Happy New Year's, guys. And here's to another year on YouTube and possibly maybe me finding my break in 2018 for my voice acting career. And again... To everybody, thank you for following me and showing some support and all that. And, and if you still want to follow me, you can follow me here on YouTube or you can follow me on Facebook at Joel Hunter hyphen voice actor. And I'm now on Twitter as Joel Geeb Machine Hunter hyphen voice actor. I'll include links to those in the description below and that's pretty much all I can think about right now so yeah I'll see you in 2018 happy new year's guys